Hey everybody, Eric Landon here again with another top 10. Today it's gonna be top 10 hidden gems for the Super Nintendo. There are a lot of hidden gems actually, games that nobody seems to know, and they are underrated, underappreciated, and they're actually good. And um, well, it's too bad there aren't many JRPGs for the Super Nintendo, actually, not even 50, I think. And half of them are famous, and the other half are not famous, are pretty unknown. So these are 10 games that I chose that I consider to be hidden gems, great games that I recommend to you for playing. So, let's begin. Number 10 is 3, Wanderers of the East. This game came out for everything in Japan. MSX, Famicom, Super Famicom, Sega Genesis, PlayStation 2, microwaves and refrigerators, but the versions we got are for Turbo Graphics, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. I believe the Genesis version is superior, but I've only played this, this NES version. You might be wondering why this game is on the list. That's because even though it came out for all those consoles and even though it belongs to a popular action RPG franchise, many people overlook this game. It's cool, linear, straight, forward and yes. I know it looks more like a metroidvania more than anything else, but trust me, it's an RPG. And it's good, and it's also hard. But it's an easy game, so you probably already know that. Number 9 is for Terra Nigma. I've already covered this game in my Forgotten JRPGs video, but I wanted to include it precisely because I still think it has been forgotten. Therefore, it's a hidden gem. It's an action RPG, not as challenging as the previous title, but hard nonetheless, like many games from this generation. With a very solid story and a fluid gameplay that the more you play it, the more addictive it becomes. It was made by Quintet, the guys who made Illusion of Gaia and Act Racer. Allegedly, it's part of the Gaia trilogy, including Illusion of Gaia, but I noticed little to zero resemblance between the three games. So I would appreciate if you leave a comment below if you know more than that, more about that. In any case, it's another good game that I totally recommend. Number 8, Dragon View. This is the sequel to the infamous Draken. It's supposed to be originally called Super Draken or Draken 2. Now, I say infamous because that game is so goddamn weird and original at the same time, but I'll talk about it some other day. Dragon View, on the other hand, is an action RPG with pretty classic elements for its time and nothing to do with its predecessor. So you're this guy who wants to rescue his kidnapped girlfriend, taken by a powerful and evil magician. Very generic plot, obviously. But the gameplay is what stands out. As you can see, you explore the outside world in first person, then you get into random encounters and then to specific dungeons or towns. Nothing new and special, I know, but it's still a great game in my opinion. I recommend it, more than the first Draken. Right next is Tecmo Secret of the Stars, obviously by Tecmo. What a horrible cover. This game is very generic in terms of story and characters, but it's just one of those games that make you like them for some reason, even though you've already played hundreds of its kind before. It has random encounters and all that jazz, you know, you walk around the overworld and suddenly, boom, with a turn-based battle system, nothing special. Very similar to the Dragon Quest series in my opinion, not hard, not easy, just fair enough. But what's truly interesting about this RPG is the gameplay. The thing is, you can swap between two different parties who will always be at the place you left them. For example, you go into a dungeon with only one party, and if you want to or need to switch to another party, you will be at an entirely different location. I don't know, I found that to be pretty original and interesting. It might not be a great RPG, but it's one that you definitely have to check out. Next is Brain Lord. Lots of games from Enix, I know. 
Well, this here is yet another action RPG, and one that is very, very good. It can become repetitive at times, but its face-paced gameplay makes you ignore that fact. You start the game in this pub with other hunters, characters that you will actually encounter often in towns or even in dungeons, and there's always some puzzle or situation of some kind involving them. I found that to be really cool. It also includes a classic quest system. You know the drill, you talk to people, they need something in particular, you go and get it, etc. It's sort of like a dungeon crawler with some puzzles here and there, with a hack and slash battle system that is very satisfactory. You can also find or purchase fairies who will help you in battle. The story is great and so are the supporting characters, so I don't see any reason for you not to play this awesome action RPG. Totally recommended. Number 5 goes to the Twisted Tales of Spike McFang. And boy, let me tell you, this doesn't look like a JRPG at all. But it is. Such is the reason many, many people miss this one, and it's probably one of the most unknown video games for the Super Nintendo. It's another action RPG, but with a very unique system that includes spinning around and throwing your hat to battle your enemies. Leveling up in the process. In, in this way, yeah, we're... The story is obviously very dumb, it's a comedy after all, and the music really goes along with all its childish propaganda. This is the only game in my list that doesn't really stand out, but as a matter of fact, it has some negative criticism. Still, I think otherwise, and I recommend it. Number 4 is Super Ninja Boy. This is yet another game that doesn't look like an RPG, but it also is, and it's very fun. The best thing of all, it's a two-player game. The story is very silly again, since it's another comedy, but the situation here is this. You go around walking in the overlord, overworld and then you get a random encounter and it turns into this. A beat em up. Ha! Ever seen something like that before? And since it's very funny, you can actually enjoy getting these encounters every now and then. I think it's funnier to play with a friend, but if you play by yourself, it's still a wonderful experience and a wonderful adventure. Not to be taken seriously, of course, just play the game for the silly beat em up experience and I guarantee you will enjoy it. Number 3 Robotech. Robotrek has nothing to do with Star Trek since you're a kid that will learn how to build and train robots to battle all sorts of creatures. People have compared this one to Pokemon, but I see very little resemblance, especially since the battle system is quite different. It's a turn-based RPG with action elements. Do you remember Final Fantasy and its action waiting bar? Well, here is kind of the same when in battle mode, but with robots. You can only choose one of your robots at a time to fight your enemies and they gain experience for every battle fought. It may seem generic, but I think it's not. It has a lot of charm and charisma, with a very peculiar story about robots and hackers, giving it a futuristic environment overall. I believe this will be an ideal game for kids starting into the RPG genre, since the story also has lots of humor and infantile situations. Totally recommended anyway. Number 2, Soul Blazer. Finally we arrive at one of the best games in the entire list, and that is Soul Blazer. So, I talked earlier in Terranigma about the Gaia trilogy, right? This game seems to be a part of that trilogy too. Once again, it's an action RPG with a battle system quite similar to that of Brainlord, with hack and slash elements that are very enjoyable. The point of this game is actually to go around re rebuilding towns by fighting enemies and killing off their little bases, 
All this in order to get six magic stones to open the path leading to the main antagonist. Believe it or not, the story in this game is quite interesting even though it doesn't show off that often, which makes people believe this is more like a Zelda game instead of a true RPG. But in any case, Soul Blazer is an amazing game with tons of hours of fun. Just give it a try. The seventh saga goes to number one. And there's a little warning there. It says, this RPG may cause excitement, shock, disbelief, confusion, and complete enjoyment. Believe it or not, that's entirely true. Because it's one of the hardest games in the entire JRPG genre. Well, at least for the Super Nintendo. So you start the game with an option to choose between seven types of characters, hence the name The Seventh Saga. Each one of them has their own different status, but I recommend starting with the basic human knight type. Either way, you're a hunter and your goal is to collect runes before other, the others do so. In some occasions you may team up with some of them, uh, or even fight against them, which I thought was pretty awesome. The gameplay is as follows, you have random encounters, too many if I may emphasize, that get you into your classic turn-based battles most of them as hard as any other encounter. Even the first few enemies of these games might actually kill you. Like I said, this game is brutally hard, but it's just so addictive, I don't know, it has something that makes you keep playing it. Perhaps that might be because the gameplay, you know, is very fluid and fast, that you kind of get the challenging factor of fighting and fighting until you win. However, the only way you're gonna win in this game is by grinding over and over and over again for the entire game. It sounds tedious, but somehow it's not. Like I said, it's just very addictive. So I strongly recommend this awesome RPG to everyone. Give it a try, you must. So, lots of strange titles, huh? Really, seriously. Some of them don't even look like Japanese RPGs, but anyway, those are my 10 recommendations to you, give them a chance if you can, and enjoy them. As usual, I want to thank you for watching my video, don't forget to share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. So, with nothing else to say, see you next time.